Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Welcome to the Intermediate Foundation 1 course. Uh, in this first lesson, we're going to be checking out the E-shaped bar chord. Uh, a lot of you guys will have come from the beginners course and already had a little bit of a sneaky look at F chord probably, but we're going to go in a lot more detail into how to play these bar chords and how to move them around up and down the neck, etc. Uh, before we start, you need to know at least the notes on the thicker string, the sixth string. Uh, you should really know the notes on the fifth string and the sixth string by now, but um, absolutely essential that you know the notes on the sixth string. Uh, a couple of you are probably a bit concerned about uh, being able to play bar chords. Uh, everybody struggles when they're learning bar chords, uh, pretty much. I've seen a few students over the years pick them up quickly, but most people, most of the time, find it difficult and painful and it takes a while. Uh, that's kind of normal, so don't be freaked out if it's you. Um, also, a lot of people kind of concerned about having, you know, their hands are too fat or too small or too thin or too long or the wrong shape or whatever. Um, I've never had a student or met anyone that just couldn't play bar chords. Um, some people have a bit of a struggle with it. Uh, those with uh, big fat fingers, you probably find this a bit easier because your hands are probably quite strong. A lot of people have trouble pressing down all the strings, so you should be all right in that department. Those of you with thin fingers might have to work on the strength a bit, but you'll get your fingers into a good place quickly. So whatever it is that you think as being the thing that's stopping you from playing bar chords probably won't exist after the end of this lesson. It's just going to be about practice. So what we're doing in this lesson is just E shape, major and minor. Now, E shape comes from the name of the E open chord. So really what, what we, the kind of the idea is if we had, I'm gonna do a close up in a sec. Um, if we had a regular E shape, kind of open chord, you know, E-shaped major chord, um, and we reposition our finger so we're not using our first finger, slide it up the neck and use our first finger, almost like a capo, to press down on all of the strings. Uh, we end up, that's our E-shaped bar chord. So the bar is kind of functioning like a capo, and the shape that we put in front of it is where we get our name from. And like I said, we're doing E-shape to start off with. You can do like C-shape and A-shape and D-shape and all sorts of stuff. For the intermediate level, I'd try and focus on just the E-shape and the A-shape. So we're gonna be just working with the E-shape, getting that really good to start off with. That's the, kind of the point. Okay, so let's get to a close-up, have a close-up look at the shape, and then I'll go through and look at the techniques. Then we'll go through and explain some of the uh, common problems that people have with them and how to solve it. So let's get to a close-up. The way that I'd recommend you start off playing your bar chords is first of all to put down a regular open E chord, an E major chord. Now what we're gonna be doing is kind of changing the fingers around so we're playing, if you like, the same dots, but we're not using our first finger. So we're kind of gonna lift off the first finger, move the second finger to where the first finger was, the third finger to where the second finger was, and the little finger to where the third finger was. So what we end up with, second finger in the first fret of the third string, third finger on the second fret of the fifth string, and little finger on the second fret of the fourth string. It should sound exactly the same as your regular E chord. So if we play that way, change the fingering around and play it again, should sound exactly the same. Now to actually start with our bar, what I recommend you do is you slide that shape up so that your second finger is in the fourth fret. Now, some of you may well have tried to play an F bar chord as your first bar chord, and that's okay, but it's also the hardest place to play a bar chord because the strings are the highest point here at the nut. So if you move it up here to the f second finger in the fourth fret, you should find putting your bar down a little bit easier. The first and probably most important technical thing that you need to think about is what part of your finger creates the bar. Now, the flat part of your finger like this is very soft and fleshy, and it's very difficult to get a solid bar down if you're using the flat. So really what we're using is kind of the outside, like 45 kind of degree angle there of your first finger. And the way to achieve this, the way to think about it, is when you put it on the actual guitar neck, put it down flat right on the fret. Right, so that's you can see the fret underneath. I know normally that you try and put your finger just behind the fret. But what you want to do is put it flat on the fret and then roll it onto the side. So I'm actually kind of twisting the finger around. So instead of being flat on the fleshy part, I'm using this little part here. And it's a lot harder. You can feel it yourself with your other finger that this, the edge of it, the 45 degree angle of the finger is a lot harder than the flat part. So put it down flat, roll it over onto the side, and then put your chord shape down. So that's the first, that's probably the, the most important uh, 
part that you want to get used to is the rolling of the finger. It also helps to think of the angle pressure as being kind of across. It's not directly in. If you're pressing directly in, you're really going to hurt this muscle here in between your first finger and your thumb. It's going to get really sore. So what you're trying to really do is you're angling the pressure kind of sideways, 45 degree angle into the wood, not just pressing flat. That'll just make your hand sore and it'll be difficult to get the cord nice. So finger on flat, roll it 45 degrees, then place the rest of the fingers. Now also, while we're talking here about placing the rest of the fingers, don't let them do this. Especially with the angle kind of going at 45 degrees there, a lot of people end up rolling kind of all their fingers and they collapse over the top. That just makes it really difficult to play and it, and it means it's difficult to co change chords and all sorts of problems. So really what we're doing there is making sure that the fingers are kind of nice and squarely on. You can see there that's wrong, move them out. Just think about kind of pulling those knuckles here toward you a little bit and that should help get the fingers nice and square. The bar can still be kind of it's almost like they're dividing the pressure. The bar pressure is going over that and the fingers are pointing kind of back towards you a little bit. Another really important thing to be aware of right at the start is the angle of your wrist. Now lots of beginners when they start trying to do bar chords end up with their wrist in this really weird kind of contorted shape like this. And that really doesn't work, you know, that's this, that, that, having that angle there. Really what you're after is this kind of shape where the, the angle between the arm and the wrist is quite flat. There's a little bit of angle, you know, a little bit's okay, but just not this. Really avoid pushing that thing that'll give you all, it'll, should, you'll probably find that all of your shoulder and stuff is tense. Really what you want is that your hand is flat, level with your arm, and then when you go to do the bar chord it kind of just folds around, but the arm is still relative, it's the fingers that do make that 45 degree angle. You can kind of see the angle of my fingers there. It's not like I'm doing this and keeping my hand and my fingers flat like that to do the bar. It's the fingers that make the 45 degree angle to the hand. That's really important. A lot of people muck that up. A good way of thinking of it is just like I said, to try and keep that, f that hand kind of part, that the, the hand and the arm flat, and then relax the shoulder. A lot of people put a lot of tension in there, so try and get the cord on and just wobble your elbow out a little bit and just kind of try and relax it. Sometimes help to push your shoulder down first and then relax because often when you push your shoulder down actually that's the most relaxed position. So don't let your shoulder be kind of up like this or whatever. Just try and relax the shoulder down, you know, keep the hand flat, grab the, the, the cord and make sure that the angle is on the fingers. Another really good hint about putting your bar chords down is to make sure you realize what notes are actually being played by the bar because you should notice that the third string, fourth string, and fifth string are covered by these fingers, so the bar's not actually having to hold those notes down. Really, all it's covering is the thicker string and the thinnest two strings. So they're the kind of the points where you really need to be uh, holding your, your bar down really tight, is having that note and the two thinnest strings, the thickest and the thinnest two from your bar. That's really important. So that can be a good test for your bar, is can you do the sixth string, and the thinnest two straight away. If you then put your fingers on and one of the notes is ringing out, you'll know that it's the fingers fault, not the bar's fault. Some people also find it helpful, I know I did when I was learning, to think of the pressure in the bar as being in the middle. So it's kind of, I'm thinking about focusing my pressure into the middle of the bar. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but, but even especially as the notes that we want to play are the ones on the outside, but if you focus your pressure in the middle, it kind of seems to press both of the edges down at the same time. So that can be a really, really good way of, of kind of thinking about your bar. You're pressing sideways, but you're also thinking of the pressure as being in the middle of the finger. That's, that's where you focus your energy, man, as you're trying to get the, uh, the bar chord down. Now, let's go through some of the really common mistakes. What you should be practicing is putting your cord down, you know, get, get your bar up, put it on, roll it back, put the, cord, the fingers down, and then strum. Pick out the notes one at a time. And then strum again. Now, what you're likely to find is that some of the notes don't ring out properly. And so what I'm going to try and do is show you the really common ways. Now, this is the first mistake that people get, and it sounds like this and the, the thinnest two strings don't ring out, and that's nearly always the fault of the bar. Because as, as they've rolled it back, they've rolled it back too far at the beginning, and 
here you'll see that it's it's kind of too far away from the fret so make sure that your bar even though it's rolled over is really nicely lined up with the fret from your eyesight which will be just kind of in there you should just see the fret but only just make sure it's not too far back or you'll have to press too hard so that's the first really really common thing second thing what you'll find is that if you let your fingers collapse, we've already talked about that a bit, but when your fingers collapse, they'll tend to lay down and mute up other strings. So, as I said, check that you've got your first string and your fifth and sixth string there, that they're ringing out fine before you get your shape. If your shape is collapsed, you'll probably get this kind of sound, where half the notes aren't really ringing out. And generally, it's the underneath of the second finger might be muting the second string. That's a really common mistake. Also, the little finger sometimes laying over and muting the uh, third string. That's, that's a really common uh, mistake there. So make sure, the way I think of it with, with the bar chord is to make sure that the fingers are nice and round as they're going onto the, onto the guitar neck. Think of it as being on the tips. Don't let them lay too flat. If they lay too flat there, it can be uh, really awkward. If I just uh, turn around a little bit so you can see the angle of the, the fingers there, you can see that they're nice and round. It's not like that where the fingers are kind of flat on. It doesn't work. So the fingers have to be nice and round like that. That's the way to, to get your bar chord. It can sometimes help to think of pushing that kind of the, the, the knuckle where your little finger joins your hand to push that up toward the guitar neck. That can help keep your fingers nice and round there. That's an important uh, important trick, that one. And the other thing I want to mention here is not having your first finger extended over the top of the neck too much. It's a, another really common beginner problem is where they, where they put the bar right over the end. Now, it's okay to kind of experiment a little bit. In fact, many of you will have to move it up and down a little bit just to try and get to the point where it's holding all of the strings down properly. But you know, it's, it, don't, don't be poking it right off the end. I wouldn't have thought any more than, say, five millimetres off the end, or like a quarter of an inch or something like that. It, that that's enough. It, don't, don't let it go right over. Unless it's the only way you can do it. If it's the only way you can do it, then you'll have to adapt some things later on. But that would be the, uh, the basic tip. We're also going to check out the minor shape today. Now, um, hopefully, uh, most of you remember that uh, that was your regular E chord there. And if you lift off your first finger, you get to an E minor chord. So it's actually exactly the same with a bar chord. Uh, when you've got your, this would be our G bar chord. Um, when you want to play a G minor, you simply lift the second finger off the shape. So you're just left with the bar and your third and fourth fingers. <laughs> Now, this presents a couple of interesting problems. The first one being that we've got another note that we have to play with the bar. So before we were just covering the sixth string and the second and first string. Now we've got to cover the sixth and the third, second and first string. So for most people, they find this quite tricky compared to uh, doing the regular major shape. You should work on the major shape first and, and be com kind of comfy with that before you even think about doing the minor chord. But uh, as soon as you can, then have a go at lifting off that second finger. Now, when you lift it off, it is okay if you want to put, kind of put it down on top of your first finger. It's, it's kind of, it's not ideal really, but it's okay. Um, I do it sometimes if I'm playing bar chords for a long time and fingers are getting sore a bit, then I'll often use my second finger to support the first finger there a bit. Um, so uh, that, that can be quite a good, uh, a good plan. Otherwise, just leave it hanging around. Now, what you will find is to get the note on that third string, it takes a little bit of manipulation with the first finger. With, with the major shape, you can kind of be a bit, you know, there's a bit of leeway there with the first finger. With the minor chord, I know I have to actually lift my finger up just a couple of millimetres. You know, it's not that much, but just a little bit more up in order to get that note nice and clear. You will find sometimes too, this is the string to check. So when you're doing your strum and picking it out, it's that third string, that's the note. That's the note that makes it minor. Major, minor. So just checking that note, the third string is good. Um, sometimes little finger can, can lay down a bit flat and mute the third string. So that's, the, that's kind of the most common problem there with the minor. Well, we've talked an awful lot now about how to play a bar chord, so let's now have a little look at where to play your bar chord. I mentioned already that knowing the notes on the sixth string was very important, and this is because this is how we get the note name of our bar chord. So 
if assuming that you know the notes on the sixth string already, uh, you'll notice that we were playing before a G bar chord. And the reason that our G bar chord was found at the third fret is because the note on the sixth string, the thickest string, at the third fret is the note G. So that putting that chord there on the third fret is a G chord because the root note is found on the thickest string at the third fret. Now, if we want to move that around and let's say play a B chord, then all we would have to do is find our B note on the sixth string, which happens to be in this case the seventh fret of the sixth string, and put our shape down, put the bar down on the seventh fret, which is where the note B is found under the first finger, put the rest of the fingers down, and we've got ourselves a B chord. Um, this also works with sharps and flats, of course, so um, hopefully you remember about finding the notes on, uh, with the power chords and stuff. If we were looking for, say, the chord A flat, uh, we would find A, which would be at the fifth fret, A flat, flat tire goes down, we go down the fret, so we'd move down there to the fourth fret, put our shape down, and we've got our A flat chord. Now, of course, we can also add into that minor. So if we wanted to find a C minor bar chord, we would find C, which would be at the 8th fret, put down the shape for minor, so just, in other words, leaving the second finger off and playing it, and we've got our C minor bar chord. So we had two shapes, the major shape and the minor shape. There are 12 available notes. I mean, playing the bar chords right up near the 12th fret is quite kind of tricky, but in theory there are 12 notes. So in effect, by doing this one lesson, you've in fact learned 24 new chords, which is kind of funky. Um, and probably one of the best things that you can do to be practicing now for your bar chords as part of the course, if you want to you know, set aside five minutes or 10 minutes to do this exercise, um, what you want to do is uh, either find a bit of sheet music or a song that you like and be able to play every chord in that song as a bar chord. So let's say the first chord was G. We go, okay, well, uh, third fret, that was G. There we go, okay, there we go. <laughs> Now let's say the next chord was uh, uh, B flat minor. You're going to go, first of all, find the note name. So you find B, and then you go, oh, there's B, B flat, there's B flat, and then you put down the minor shape. So think of it as a two-stage thing. The, the note name, is it a B flat or an F sharp or a G or C or whatever, and then is it major or minor shape that you put down in front of it? And each time you play the chord, you should play the chord, in this case B flat minor, strum, then pick out the notes, one at a time. Make sure all the notes are good. If any of the notes are not good, try and kind of fiddle with the chord and make sure that you've got it right, okay? If it's a bit like this, then look down, see if you can figure out what it is that is going wrong. Oh, the bar's too far away, okay, so I'll just manipulate that around. Ah, now we got it. That, that's the, really the best way to practice. And just go through randomly playing bar chords. It does take a bit of practice. I wouldn't really recommend practicing your bar chords for longer than five minutes in one sitting. Five minutes is quite a long time. You should find that you can give the, the, that little muscle there in between your thumb and your first finger quite a workout within the five minutes. So um, that's what I'd recommend for your practice. Um, I know this has been a very long lesson, but the bar chords are, are really probably one of the most fundamental parts of the intermediate foundation stage. Um, and, and really, once you can do your bar chords, you're kind of graduating out of the, the intermediate level as a guitar player. So um, really, th this is something to, to spend quite a lot of time on. Uh, it's going to take a bit of practice, you know. D don't expect to get this right away. It is going to be a little bit tough. It'll be a bit frustrating, but stick it at, it, it, you know, everyone can do it. So, you know, just be patient and get stuck into it. So um, I hope you've enjoyed that look at uh, bar chords and that you're... Uh, getting them kind of right and feeling confident with it. If you've got any questions still, uh, wander over to the forum, uh, justinguitar.com forward slash forum, and there's plenty of people, including me, that can uh, come along and help you out and answer any of your questions. Uh, hope you've had fun with that, and I will see you for another lesson very, very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.